2022-2030 Vatican Strategies Upon considering perspectives of different countries and players, solving exclusively isolated tasks, artificially limiting the degrees of freedom, is unreasonable. One may use an analogy of some card games, e.g. you may have quite strong hand in one suit and nothing in others. But if you are not the one making a play and you don't know what the tramp card is, you will be forced to give everything away whilst all of your strong cards will not play. The era of drastic changes, wars, and catastrophes, when time is extremely shrunk, makes extremely rough, short-term, and powerful tools such as armed forces, military and industrial complex, blockades, and others the most crucial assets. However, during the inertial and peaceful flow of time, long-term trends such as meanings, scientific progress, and others have the main influence. A strong player may be universal, capable of switching and adjusting oneself to different realities, whilst the one who has adapted and specialized oneself to the previous conditions has all chances to fall down, similar to a colossus on clay feet. Europe, which went all in on economic development and social comfort, which will lead to a really harsh fall in the upcoming three to five years, can serve as a good example. The Vatican has suffered the same fate, despite having existed for over 1500 years filled with different intrigues, continuity of traditions and history. But, for the past 100 years, it was living within the paradigm of positivistic, incremental, globalist development of humanity. The Second Vatican Council, 1962 to 1965, drastically liberalized the studying, simplified the rituals, requirements, and entry barriers in an attempt to get itself a place in the new Western world, laying the foundation for accepting almost any innovations. If one considers Roman Catholic Church exclusively as political and social structure, existing for decades, such decisions seem logical and understandable. But if it is considered as a religious institution, whose life expectancy is considered by hundreds of years, the situation is quite tragic. Over the next couple of decades, the formal leadership in the Council of 27 Guardians of the Inclusive Capitalism, which is supported by 147 transnational corporations with the aggregate assets of $10 trillion will be considered as quite a significant result. But by being one of them, being the showcase of the Council, the Vatican is losing the trust of flock, which will lead to much more dreadful consequences in the long-term perspectives. The Roman See doesn't have so many strategies, in brackets I have pointed out the global scenario. Attempts of creating the Fourth Rome in the Western Europe with the capital in Vienna, the world of Pan regions. The alliance with and assistance to Russia in its attempt to implement the Third Rome Gendarme of Europe strategy, the world of Pan regions. Sticking to the course on liberalization, losing its religious component and becoming one of the most powerful transnational corporations, global world for chosen ones. Orthodoxal recovery and withdrawal from most of the Second Vatican Council's decisions, rigid missionary work as the European Reconquista with the help of Ibero-America, Black Africa and baptized China, catastrophic scenarios. At the end of 2021, the idea of the inclusive capitalism left the global agenda and was no longer the dominating one. Since then, the Vatican has been choosing between the Third and the Fourth Romes, at the same time toying with the establishment of Ibero America, but keeping in touch with globalists. And yeah, I will not be surprised if a part of the repented cartel warriors and partisans from Latin America becomes the core or the pro-image of the Vatican's armed formations and will be transferred to Europe.